Porsche describes the Panamera as the sports car among luxury sedans. Because a tall Porsche executive insisted on sitting comfortably in the back of the original model, it was also known as the hunchback of luxury sedans. Welcome the second generation. Enthusiasts who recognize this as the new Panamera will immediately go to the back to check out the fly line, which is far more 911 now than Quasimodo. And owners, be prepared for requests to do this. You will be barraged. Much has changed inside, too. A blizzard of controls are replaced by a very responsive haptic surface and a 12.3-inch touchscreen interface. It's a big advance. I give Volvos the edge when it comes to simplicity. The vent operation is second only to the wing, though sometimes you just want to grab a knob. Fortunately, with all-wheel drive, power is very direct. This luxury car has launch control to extract every ounce of power. Porsche says the 0 to 60 time is a blistering 3.4 seconds on its way to a top speed of 190 miles an hour. It's very easy to drive very fast, so I hear. This is an all new car. Body panels are aluminum, so is much of the structure. A plug-in hybrid powertrain is on its way. For now, choose between a 440 horsepower V6 or this turbo model's four liter 550 horse V8. It pumps out 567 pound-feet of torque. All Panameras are twin turbocharged, even those without a turbo badge. The rev counter is real, flanked by configurable 7-inch screens. I particularly like the G-Force meter and the night vision option that points out pedestrians and cyclists. Panamera runs exclusively with this new, incredibly crisp 8-speed dual-clutch transmission. Like many electronic controllers, deliberate action is needed when selecting drive or reverse. There's a manual mode, of course. Panamera can be a pussycat or a tiger, depends on the drive mode. Air suspension adjusts height. The adjustable and active suspension changes ride quality. The new Panamera is a little larger, about an inch and a half longer, but it never feels like a large car. It's very nimble. Of course it is. It's a Porsche. Rear axle steering helps to keep drama away in the twisties. How capable is this car? Well, Porsche claims that it is the fastest luxury car on the Nuremberg ring with an impressive lap time of 7 minutes and 38 seconds. Uh, just in case you're thinking about bringing yours over there. That's quicker than Porsche's Cayman GT4, hardly a slouch. Even conquering corners in its most aggressive suspension setting, Panamera Turbo keeps things quiet, calm, and comfortable, and of course, visually interesting. While cornering, I am enjoying a delightful shiatsu massage from the seats. It's pretty darn good. Panamera Turbo's EPA rating of 18 city, 25 highway is not bad considering. The sport response button offers 20 seconds of extra engine boost. Sort of like Underdog's Super Energy Pill. Remember Underdog? Let's not forget, Panamera is positioned as Porsche's luxury car, which makes its performance shops all the more impressive. Everybody loves power, but it's the brakes that'll save your butt. God, seat belts tighten up. There is a fuel-saving engine start-stop system. I find it obtrusive in a car like this. Glad it can be turned off. The meticulously crafted cabin gets pieces that look forged, not stamped. It does not have dramatic accent lighting like BMW 7 Series. Much of the latest safety tech, such as adaptive cruise control, auto braking with pedestrian detection, blind spot warning, lane keep assist, and the night vision is optional. Apple CarPlay is standard. Do not skip the Burmester audio system. It's bliss. Equipped with optional Inno Drive, the Navi system looks at GPS data nearly two miles ahead and then adjusts the driving dynamics accordingly. There's a wireless hotspot too, which I used with my iPad to find my iPhone that dropped on the side of the road while shooting running footage. Panamera is strictly a four-seater and very comfortable. Thigh support is terrific. There are so many features back here, I could do a documentary. 
There's heat for the seats, climate zones, and the ability to choose music that can be locked out by the driver. Sun management too. Legroom is fine. The executive model stretches the wheelbase 5.9 inches for owners that are chauffeured. Personally, I would prefer driving. Trying to sell this to your spouse? I would try the line, honey, let's shop for a practical hatchback. After that, you're on your own. There's no kick to open tailgate. Even with a more graceful back end, the trunk is larger now. With the security panel out of the way, Panamera takes on seven packs of softness and absorbency. Now, if you need to haul a couple bikes, or if you plan on thoroughly TPing someone's mansion, the back seats drop very easily. I only brought out a dozen packs, and I reckon I could get 14 in without a fight. Design? Uh, this is a big improvement from the outgoing model, though I never found it tortured the way some people did. There are far more awkwardly designed cars than the Gen 1 Panamera. Like the 911 that it is clearly inspired by, this is not a showy, dramatic statement. It's more organic, a form follows function machine, something Porsche is a master of. Panamera Turbo is not cheap, beginning at about $148,000. As tested, $181. Uh, look at it this way, that's less than a 911 Turbo S, and it holds four comfortably. Plus, there's that show. The second generation Panamera offers a no compromise attitude towards luxury and a sleeker design that has Porsche's back. How comfortable is this car? Well, I drove nearly 400 miles in one day and was as fresh as a daisy at the end of it. Those massaging seats really do help. And I must say, driving 60 miles an hour in this car feels painfully slow. Puttering around in a 45 mile an hour zone, I looked down to find I was doing nearly 70. Yikes. I'm pretty sure an officer wouldn't buy my excuse of honest, I didn't think I was going that fast. That is my opinion of the 2017 Porsche Panamera Turbo. If you need a good reason to make a lot of money, this would be one. I think a lot of you know that I shoot, write, and edit these videos. One important step in the photography process is to always keep the car clean. You didn't think I was gonna run this car through an automatic car wash, did you? One thing that I have learned over the years, I like wiping the car down because I really, really understand what the designer had in mind, much more intimate process. Sounds like a porn film. Uh, one tip when you're washing your car, listen, other than the motorcycle, that's my neighbor pressure washing his Toyota. Never, never, never use a pressure washer to clean your car. It will ruin the paint. And also, always use separate rags for the wheels because brake dust is very abrasive. All right. There are my tips. That is driven. I am Tom Volk. Don't, don't pressure wash your car.